Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Wanderla Holidays Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Monarch Network Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal the operator by pressing star and one, I'm sorry, star and zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Dani from Monarch Network Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Darwin. Uh, good afternoon on behalf of Monarch Network Capital. We're delighted to host the senior management of Wanderla Holidays. Uh, and we have with us today Mr. Arun, uh, the managing director of the company, Mr. Sajid, CFO, and Mr. Dhiran, Chief, uh, Chief Operating Officer. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management and then move to question and answers. Uh, thank you and over to you, sir. Hi. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Arun, uh, MD of Wanderla Holidays. Um, thank, thanks to everyone for joining the call. <clears throat> I extend a warm welcome to all of you to discuss the Q3 and nine months of FI24 results. Along with me is our uh, CFO, Mr. Saji Lewis, and our CEO, Mr. Dhiran Chaudhary. Uh, we continue to strengthen our uh, management team, and I'm happy to announce that the appointment of Saji K. Lewis as uh, uh, CFO of Wandala. Saji is a chartered accountant and brings with him a rich experience of over 15 years, spearheading end-to-end finance and account functions, entailing business partnership business controlling, compliances, etc. On behalf of Vandala, I extend a warm welcome to him. Uh, we also have Mr. Dhiran Chaudhary, our CEO, who has joined us uh, uh, since June last year. He has a strong background in operations uh, from companies like Tomato and Red Bull. He's also an NCAD uh, MBA alumni. Pleased to have uh, these two uh, colleagues with me. I'm pleased to share the results that we have uh, had as a quarter. Uh, but marked by several key achievements and positive financial results. <clears throat> Our revenue from operations for the quarter stood at 123.6 crores, representing a 9.2% 9, 9 growth over last year's uh, quarter. Uh, we are consistently growing in terms of both volume and value. Um, our marketing efforts have played a pivotal role in driving awareness and is reflected in footfall in our parks during the quarter. We have successfully executed different uh, formats of marketing campaigns during festive seasons for Diwali, Christmas, and New Year, along with uh, uh, concerts uh, like Sunburn at Kochi and New Year event at Hyderabad Park, contributing to overall footfalls during the quarter. Footfalls for the quarter stood at 9.45 lakhs, an increase of 3% YOY. And for the nine months uh, FY24, footfalls stood at 25.3 lakhs, 25.43 lakhs, an increase of 1% YOY. This reflects the growing popularity of our attraction and effectiveness of our marketing efforts. Uh, R2 for the quarter stood at uh, 1,256 rupees, an increase of 6% YOY. And for nine months, FY24, the R2 was 1,452 rupees, registering a growth of 15% YOY. The increase in R2 is mainly driven by healthy growth in non-ticket revenue along with encouraging response from walk-in groups and all aspects of our customer base. We have seen an uh, approximately 35% uh, contribution of uh, non-ticket revenue for the quarter, against 25% in the last year. In line with our commitment to innovation and growth, we have successfully launched a new rides during this quarter uh, in Hyderabad, which has been very well uh, received by visitors. Additionally, our expansion plans remain on track and uh, of opening paths in Orissa and Chennai. Uh, we have signed uh, an MOU recently with Gujarat government to establish Wandala as a tourist destination in Gujarat. This uh, strategic move is aimed at uh, tapping into new markets and for further diversifying our revenue stream. Uh, looking ahead, uh, we remain optimistic about future growth. Uh, we believe our co continued focus on guest experience, innovation, and expansion will uh, drive sustained growth. Uh, we appreciate the dedication of our team members, our loyalty of our customers, and support of our shareholders. Now I request our CFO, Mr. Saji Lewis, to deliver, delve into the financial results of the quarter. 
Thank you, Arun, uh, for introducing me and giving me an opportunity to be part of uh, Wanderla family. Looking forward to build a company's growth journey together. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Q3 FI24 earnings call. I will provide a brief overview of the financial performance of the quarter. On quarterly performance, the revenue, including other income, for the quarter stood at 129.5 crores as against 117.7 crores up by 10% YOY. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 60.4 crores as against 61 crores marginally degrew by 1% YOY basis. EBITDA margin stood at 46.7%. Profit after tax for the quarter stood at 37.3 crores down by 4% and tax margin stood at 28.8%. Moving to 9 months financial performance, our revenue, including other income, for 9 months uh, FI24 stood at 401.1 crores as against 339.7 crores, an increase of uh, 18% YOY. EBITDA stood at uh, 209.5 crores up by 18% YOY. Our EBITDA margin stood at 52.2%. Profit after tax for 9 months FI24 stood at 135.3 crores versus 113.8 crores same period last year, up by 19% YOY. Tax margins for 9 months stood at 33.7%, up by 20 BPS YOY. I now request the moderator to open the forum for question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Angad Kattare from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my first question is uh, related to uh, your comments on the Bhuvaneshwar Park. You are guiding it to open in Q1, three months earlier. Can you just uh, tell us, will it be in the first half of Q1 or will it be in the second half? Uh, will we utilize the full Q1 uh, as my first and uh, the follow-up for that is, uh, can you give us the timeline for the Chennai Park as well? How is the progress going on? Uh, thank you for the question. So we are hoping to open Bhuvanesha Park in the later half of May. So we will uh, definitely not get uh, most of uh, Q1. We expect uh, to get uh, all of June and maybe a little bit of May. Towards the end of May is when we are planning to open it. Uh, earlier we had planned that we, we, we might open only in the third quarter. So, but we are happy that we are able to open in the first quarter. Now, regarding Chennai, we hope to open uh, the park uh, in the third quarter, second or third quarter of FI26. Okay. And uh, sir, what is the overall capex that we have spent on the upcoming two parks and how much is still pending? For the Bhuvaneshwar Park, uh, we are uh, planning to, our plan is to spend about some 189 crores. And uh, we have already uh, spent about uh, uh, 140 crore uh, with respect to the Bhuvaneshwar Park. Chennai Park, we are starting only the land and other things we already procured other than that uh, other expenses are yet to begin which was about summer close to 80 crores okay uh, sir we are seeing one of our competitors getting aggressive in expanding operations with their recent announcements uh, to expand to indoor and other states uh, where we are also you know planning to put up a park uh, in the near future any comments on the development uh, uh, Development of the new park planned in MP? Like, uh, I mean, I don't know what is their plan. Currently, I'm not aware of. I, mean, I think they have a couple of parks which they already had. They've integrated into one company, but they are much smaller parks than our. And I don't, I don't know whether we'll be directly competing with them. Our offering in indoor will be large format amusement parks, not small parks. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, we are not really worried about that. Thank you so much. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Jaiveer Shekhawat from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Sure. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is related to Odisha Park. Given that you're near commissioning, could you talk about your pricing and marketing strategy here? Uh, pricing uh, roughly we are looking at uh, ten, uh, uh, an R2 of roughly thousand rupees, and marketing uh, because it's a new park. I'm sure we will we will be uh, spending a lot on that, and we will make sure that it gets the proper reception it deserves. Also, the government of Odisha has been very. Uh, I mean, they have they have really literally championed our uh, project. So I'm expecting a lot of uh, synergies to unlock with Odisha tourism as well. Uh, we hope to uh, capitalize on a little bit of the summer season, even though we may not be able to get all of it. Uh, we will hope to get the last uh, bits of May and then whole of uh, June onwards. I think our park should be open. Uh, that's the current planning. Uh, we will get. We will keep you updated more as and more uh, as more uh, information becomes available. Sure, and that helps. Uh, secondly, if I look at performance of footfalls at Kochi and Bangalore, there is a clear divergence. So. One, what's driving 10 percentage plus growth in footfalls in Bangalore, and what's the reason behind decline in footfalls at Kochi? If you can explain that. So Bangalore is uh, trending uh, as expected in terms of footfall growth. Uh, Kochi, we didn't have good footfall growth in Q3, uh, mainly because uh, towards the end of uh, December we had a slight COVID scare in Kerala, and I think the the public in Kerala react to these kind of adverse news a little more than other uh, two markets. So if you look at the uh, footfalls in uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad, they've grown, uh, but Kochi has degrown. So, uh, so mainly it happened in December. Saji, you can give any, some more details. Anything. Yeah, Kochi, uh, there is a slight uh, dip in the uh, footfall for the quarter and that. But if you see the nine months and that also, there is only slight uh, minus four percent dip in the uh, footfall. This is whatever our MDS indicator. Uh, this COVID scare and uh, that is has actually resulted in a dip in the uh, footfall. So, assuming that it was largely because of, say, one of events, there were bomb losses yeah. then, plus the COVID scare as well. I mean, how do you see the revival of footfalls from next year onwards at Kochi? And then, what's your expectation for Bangalore and Hyderabad as well? See, we, we, these are all matured parts, so we are not expecting huge growth in footfalls here, mm-hmm. but we should be able to manage 3 to 5% footfall growth uh, if you look at a whole year. Uh, Bangalore is outperforming right now, and the hope is that we can outperform even in uh, Hyderabad. Hyderabad footfalls are actually lower than compared to uh, Cochin and Bangalore, which we feel is an anomaly. We hope to correct it in the next year. Sure. And uh, if I think of ticketing revenue growth and non-ticketing revenue growth, again, there is a good divergence there. So one, what's behind the muted growth in ticketing revenue? And secondly, I mean, what's really driving the mid-teens kind of a growth in your non-ticketing revenue? And what's your outlook here? So if you compare to uh, look at uh, uh, ATP growth, we have grown by I think 6% in ATP. Uh, the reason is uh, this year I think during Q3 we had a higher uh, contribution of groups as against uh, retail footfall in FI20 uh, in FI23. Um, so uh, that's the main reason. The reason for uh, better performance in uh, NTR is because we've been uh, focusing on that, and I think our NTR uh, now com- comprises almost 35% of our revenue. Uh, if you look at Q3, uh, compared to 25 to 20, 26% in the last uh, corresponding period of last year. So uh, there is a clear 10% improvement in terms of uh, contribution from NTR. And this is something that we've been talking about before as well. We hope to continue in this part. Sure. And my last question to you, Saji, is can you explain the reason for substantially higher OPEX during this quarter on a both YOY and quarter and quarter basis in the other expenses? Yeah, this uh, the variance in the expenses uh, mainly because of the salary as well as for the uh, off-road employees cost. Uh, there is about uh, 20% hike in the uh, employee uh, cost with respect to the outsourced employees, where we have about 10% of uh, salary rate hike, and then 10% of uh, uh, count hike also happened in the current year. If you see the total hike, some 36 percent of my hike has happened in the uh, operational cost, which is mainly because of the reasons whatever I already told. And other one is 20 percent hike happened with respect to the employee cost. This is mainly we have recruited about a net of 60 people in the company, which has uh, resulted in an increased expenses in the uh, current quarter 
and even in the nine months and that period. Other than that, we have done an additional uh, uh, advertisement and then sales promotion activities, especially during the uh, the festival season, which has resulted in little. And even we have made some, we have performed certain events also in the past, which has resulted in certain additional expenses for the marketing uh, activities as well. Other than that, there are no other. Uh, 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 surprises in the expenses. Nine months also almost uh, similar uh, reason. Other than that, there are no other uh, exceptional reasons for the quarter, as well as for the nine months. Sure, understood. Team, wish you all the best for the Odisha Park. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Prakar Soni. From Value Research, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question. So my question is related to the uh, events which you said have been uh, organized at the parks. So just to understand, uh, have they contributed to overall profitability, or uh, because they have uh, contributed certainly to the expenses, as you said, they have gone high because yeah, of the marketing. Yeah, uh, it contributes to footfalls for us. You've seen growth in footfalls, right? Yeah. So. Uh, so that is due to the uh, events what have been organized. It's, is that it's a, actually some total of not just events, it's all all the marketing effort that we have done. So there are two parts to our marketing cost. One part is uh, all you know events and all that, and then and then there is advertisement cost, and then is all there is also commissions that we pay out to our agents uh, for group footfalls. All those things have gone up in line with the uh, footfalls. And we had a higher percentage of uh, people coming from groups, and which is led to a higher uh, payout for co as commission. So the, the, all these things are put together in that in that cost. So going forward, any guidance you can give us uh, on the like uh, margin side, like uh, are they, uh, I, uh, they continue to stay in this? They are already at peak margin last year, so you like it will be slightly lower as we have new parts uh, you know coming into play and. Uh, we'll be uh, adding uh, employees to our uh, fold. So margins, like as like it's come down by three or four percent this quarter. That may continue uh, for the next few years because we will be adding uh, further. Uh, you know, uh, we will be adding further people into the system, and also marketing and promotion costs also will be in line. I mean, it, it will only be going up as we have new parks to be launched, etc. Uh, but uh, in a steady state basis, uh, the kind of margins that we are seeing, uh, we, I mean, we. we we hope to maintain our EBITDA north of 50%. Okay. And uh, just one question related to the Odisha Park. As you say that it will be functional in first quarter, second half of the first quarter. So, uh, have, are we already, uh, when do we look for the stabilization of the park and uh, a good uh, revenue churn from there? Uh, the first six months of the park will obviously be in the launch phase. Um, after that, we can see uh, stabilization. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chandresh Malpani from Nivesha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, my first question is on the our expansion strategy. So, uh, like we are expanding into Bhubaneswar and uh, Chennai, but what is uh, what would be the uh, your outlook on this government's thrust to promote these religious places? So, are you looking to expand in those? regions as well and uh, secondly sir on the Gujarat uh, that MOU which we have signed uh, where would the park would be set up? Uh, we have been approached by UP government to set up uh, parks in the the religious uh, centers which are upcoming like Ayodhya and Varanasi but we are still considering it not yet uh, decided because our uh, parks are large format parks uh, we need to make sure that there is enough catchment for us to um, you know, make, make sure that it's worth the investment. Uh, go, the Gujarat investment will come between uh, Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. We mean close to gift city is what we are looking at. Okay, and sir, our expansion would be asset light only going, going forward. It will be a mix of asset light and asset heavy depending on the geography and what kind of land passes are available. Some state governments are very proactive and they are giving us, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, land practically free, free like in Bhubaneswar and Indore. But other places, uh, you know, uh, like for example, uh, 
uh, NCR, we are looking at uh, this thing, uh, for project as well. There we will have to invest in uh, land. So it just depends on the geography. Uh, I think tier one or uh, tier one cities, it will be hard to find land uh, on lease. But if it's available, then we are also looking uh, open to doing that. Okay, sir. And lastly, what would be your target footfalls and ARPU for FY25 considering Bhubaneswar uh, 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 plant coming in early? So, any any guidance on that part? Yeah, for the existing park, uh, you can consider about some five percent growth we are expecting, and then for the Bhubaneswar park, uh, maybe around some five to six lakh. Five to six lakh. Yeah, in a year. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Richa from Equity Master. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm actually new to the company, so uh, kindly bear with me. Uh, you had in the earlier calls perhaps mentioned the plan for resort expansion as well in Hyderabad and uh, Bangalore. So I mean, could you just give an update on that? Uh, we are in the process of expanding our resort in Bangalore. We are adding 40 rooms to the resort, and we are also adding an adventure park and a mice and convention center. <coughs> this will take about a year uh, to complete. <coughs> so only in FY26 we can uh, expect uh, the effects of this. Uh, we are going to use the next one year for construction. Uh, total investment we are looking at between 70 and 80 crores yes. all put together. Uh, and then we uh, with this we'll also have a, a large convention center in Bangalore which we don't have currently, and also an adventure park which uh, the new it's uh, something new that we are doing. Um, once these projects uh, uh, you know are stabilized, then we will look at uh, you know replicating them in uh, in Hyderabad, which is our next candidate uh, to do a resort project. Uh, but we will do it only after FI26. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, your Chennai Park is, uh, I think, almost uh, like Bangalore when it comes to size and drive. So, I mean, going by historical experience, once you launch a park, how much time does it take for it to, you know, get the kind of footfall that a mature park uh, gets? Uh, the poodle footfall ramp up for a new park will take about two to three years. But, uh, I mean, we are expecting all our projects to be uh, a bit of positive from year one itself. Uh, thanks to our, uh, you know, very efficient way of constructing and uh, also because we manufacture a lot of the rights and technologies ourselves, it's our own, uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, we are vertically integrated to an extent where we actually design the park and make rides in house. So because of that, I think our capex loss uh, cost will be much lower than competition and this is why you're seeing high EBITDA margins in Mandala. So that will continue and that will help us, uh, you know, reduce any potential losses. Um, and also the fact that we are using an asset like model, uh, but in uh, Chennai we are uh, we have actually bought land and we have you know built it uh, as a as a greenfield project. But we do uh, expect Chennai to give uh, good uh, you know um, you know Bangalore levels of performance after the ramp up period. Um, so we should be able to cross uh, one million plus footfalls uh, within three years. Uh, or maybe even earlier than that, and also ARPU will be uh, comparable or even slightly higher than Bangalore. Okay, okay. And sir, my last question is, uh, these event-based revenues like Sunburn and all, uh, are they getting captured in your metrics uh, that you share for footfall and ticket? And if yes, where exactly do they get captured in those metrics? This will come in non-ticket revenue uh, because uh, uh, ticket revenue, uh, if, if, if tickets are being sold, it will be... Uh, it will be done in, uh, it will be added as ticket, but otherwise it will mostly come in non-ticket revenue for most of the events. And footfall is also capturing these uh, event-based uh, footfalls that are there? Only if it's a unique footfall. Sometimes we do get people who buy the tickets and for the park and event together, so we count, we don't duplicate that footfall, it will be shown as a unique footfall. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, you all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Angad Kartare from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, what will be the split of group and walk-ins for the quarter and uh, also the R2 split uh, for this quarter between ticket and non-ticket? That will be helpful, sir. The... 56 percent is the uh, group and then balance is the uh, general in the quarter. And, uh, 
for the arpu sir uh, ticket and non ticket arpu is uh, uh, generally 1256 for the quarter uh, which is uh, uh, ticket revenue will be somewhere close to 890 balance 366 will be the sph arpu yeah, yeah non ticket uh, non ticket revenue is 366 okay okay thank you sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Monish Gotke from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, so whenever we plan a new park, what kind of uh, payback period do we target? Payback period and return ratios? Yeah, our uh, payback period is between 7 and 8 years, full payback. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's a kind of rough uh, estimate. It could vary a little bit depending on how quickly the footfalls ramp up in in the park. Yeah. A you, satellite model will have a lesser uh, payback period. If, if, it's a, if you're purchasing land and then constructing a park, it will have a, like MD said, some eight to nine years it may take. But if it's a satellite model, maybe some four years or something like that, you will be able to uh, break even. I mean, payback will be within three, four, maximum of four years or something like that. Okay. And so what would be like uh, um, like replacement of rides which we have to do? So what would be the typical, you know, maintenance capex which we have to do on an annual basis? Or let's say per park, if you can, you know, share. I mean, typically like uh, in a park, you, uh, there will yeah. be a replacement, you, uh, introduction of new, uh, yeah. Uh, we will roughly spend about 10% of our top line, but uh, next financial year it will be slightly higher because I think we're spending about 30 crores in Bangalore and I think uh, 15 crores in uh, Kochi, right? Yeah. yeah, so I think uh, about 30, 45 crores is roughly the 45 to 50 crores we will be spending. So this will be spent on an annual basis, right? Just to, you know, maintain the yeah, rights yeah. or to introduce new rights. All the existing parts will get 10% of CapEx. Uh, as to you know to add new rides yeah, and yeah yeah and repairs maintenance not repairs but any addition to the park in terms of restaurants or new rides anything new new facility okay and so what is our you know medium to long term strategies like we will be like expanding this park like what are the plans like and you know going and in, getting into adjacencies like maybe a water park or theme park so what is your thought process overall if you can share we are uh, we are already doing water parks and resorts and everything. Uh, our uh, immediate goal is to do uh, geographical uh, expansion because right now we only have three parks operational and two under construction. Uh, we want to be in about ten cities within by uh, you know we should have we should have concrete plans of being in ten cities by uh, within the next uh, few years, and uh, that's that's the plan. Of course, then we are also looking at how we can leverage technology. We are investing a lot into that in terms of how to um, use the data that we collect and how to improve customer experience and uh, revenues for us. So these are two uh, kind of uh, broad um, strategies from our side. Okay. And so any like, uh, so I have recently started tracking this, so I'm not uh, very much uh, knowledgeable on this industry, but like uh, if you see, let's say, a tie-up with some foreign company, let's say Disney or something, just to have those technology of, you know, rides and all, have you explored it? Uh, we are not looking to, uh, see, Disney usually doesn't tie up with any other company. They will uh, do their own parks and those are very, very expensive, not workable for a country like India. Um, so, I mean, if there are other IPs in terms of technology, if we feel there is a need that we can, you know, leverage on it, we'll definitely be open to it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranodi S from MAS Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so, I just wanted to understand, you mentioned uh, the, the near-term aspiration is to be in 10 cities. So wanted to understand, uh, do we have some thought around how many will be tier one and how many will be tier two? I understand tier one, you look at 400 to 500 crore capex and uh, tier two, you look at around 150 to 200 crore capex. So in split of the 10 cities that you're looking at, we would like to do more tier one uh, cities so wherever possible. Uh, so for example, we are looking at NCR, we would like to do something in Bombay, between Bombay and Pune also. Uh, 
uh, in Maharashtra, and we are looking at other big cities, uh, maybe like Kolkata. You know, so but we have not really finalized the places yet. Depends on what we find in terms of land acquisition uh, and government support. Um, but uh, we also want to go to tier two cities because for us it's a very easy uh, entry into some of these uh, geographies, and uh, we find that we can, uh, you know, dominate the market uh, very easily. So it'll be a mix of both. I can't give you the exact numbers, but we could. I would say we will still focus on tier one, but we will also be open to tier two. Sure, sure. Uh, and just an uh, add-on question to that: uh, There's been an immense focus towards Ayodhya. And uh, UP government has already mentioned about something like a Rama land, right, which is like a theme park. So any thoughts around that? Will we be pitching for that? Yeah, yeah we've been uh, approached by the UP government to do something like this. We are evaluating it. We have not yet uh, uh, frozen on anything because we are already uh, uh, close to doing something in the NCR region in Noida through the UP government itself. So we don't want to do multiple projects in one one state currently. Uh, our philosophy is we want to be in one one city, one large city in one state, uh, preferably the largest. So for us, NCR makes the most sense. Uh, but we are open to evaluating uh, proposals from the UP government. I mean, but I think it's still early days. But eventually, yes, we we are open to it. Sure. And one last question. Uh, in a 1.4 billion nation FI23, we saw 33 lakh footfalls, right? Uh, what are your projections from, let's say, two, three years down the line? Uh, where do you see this number heading? Uh, do we see a doubler in the next three years? Yeah, I think if once we have uh, Chennai and Bhubaneswar uh, stable, uh, we easily will add 1.5, another 1.5 million to it. Uh, but this would take about three, four years. Uh, by that time, of course, we will have other projects also in the pipeline. Um, but again, you know, it depends on how quickly we are able to ramp up footfalls in the new projects. But we are hoping that we should be able to do it in two to three years. Great, great. Thank you so much and wishing you good luck for the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Madhur Rati from Counter Cyclical Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sorry, you are not clear. I can't hear you. Am I audible right now? Uh, not really, sir. This is not clear, sir. Uh, is it better? Uh, sir, we request you to please use the handset mode. Um, I'll get down by the machine. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Prakar Soni from Value Research. Please go ahead. Uh, just one follow-up question on the expansion plans. Are we uh, looking? How are we looking to fund this? Like any plan for debt and equity? Uh, what exactly are we looking forward to? Yeah, it is little too early to take a call on this. So we will be evaluating the. Uh, both the plans, maybe a mix of it or something like that, maybe after the next year, so not immediately. <coughs> Currently, our uh, cash flows will be able to, we should be able to manage the current two projects with existing cash flows and cash accruals. But as and when we, when we uh, look at new projects and we sign on any new projects, at that point, we, we will be looking at some debt because we are currently debt-free. We have no debt in the books. Uh, so we are open to taking some discount, and then if the project gets, uh, you know, if we are able to handle more uh, execution uh, simultaneously, at that point we might even look at equity dilution. Uh, but uh, like Saji said, we don't see that happening for at least the next one year. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vinay Natkarni from Hathaway Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just wanted to check out all the Vandana parks uh, are exactly the same or do you change based on the customer profile in each location? Yeah, all our parks are different. Uh, they are we usually tailored to the our current, I mean, our, you know, host city. Uh, for example, in Bangalore, we have heated pools, whereas in Kochi, where the water, where there is much uh, warmer, there is no need for heated pools. So, according, accordingly, we'll change depending on the, depending on the, 
you know the weather patterns and uh, you know uh, the climate and uh, the local taste we will change our parks uh, and we try not to i mean our current three parks have uh, there are commonalities between rides and experiences but for example in chennai and bhubaneswar the rides and experiences are going to be different okay and and that would impact the uh, the uh, the arpus also uh not really uh, our food our food will be you know i mean i think it'll uh, i think it's just a mix of rides that we are going to do will be different and how do you so then increase your food food because of that going forward uh, in fact it should help us improve our food because we feel that you know we want to create more differentiation between our uh, projects so that if somebody has visited already a park in cochin he should still feel like going to our park in chennai just only because the experience are going to be different so that is the way yeah. we are looking at yeah precisely my question what i wanted to check out was uh, what what are the things that you people are looking for how do you improve your rpu going forward because that is footfalls are of course your marketing will drive but for rpu yeah. what is it that effort you are putting in rpu like i said you know new attractions one uh, new uh, fnb and non ticket revenue options uh, new uh, retail uh, addition of adventure park and mice uh, facilities resorts these are all for us uh, rpu enhancing uh um, and you know non ticket revenue for us is always been a focus especially post covid so these are all uh, our methods to improve our book. okay last question is there any uh, uh resistance upper resistance on ticket prices so far no uh, we been we in fact we've taken a almost 30% uh, improvement in our uh, arpus if you look at uh, fi21 and fi23 Uh, or FI20 and FI24 uh, right now there will be almost a 35% difference in our R2 so we have not seen a huge impact. Uh, we actually we have not seen any impact of uh, uh, ticket prices but it's also because i think uh, people's uh, preferences for uh, low, uh, you know uh, near uh, nearby entertainment have changed post covid i think there is a more focus on uh, frequent uh, but less expensive uh, vacations uh, for indians i think that is uh, helping us as well Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Maithili Balakrishnan from Alchemy Capital Management. Please go ahead. Hi. A uh, couple of questions. Just wanted to get a sense from you on, uh, you know, you had mentioned the capacity utilization is sort of high in some of the uh, places such as Bangalore. Sorry, Hello? ladies and gentlemen, the line for the current participant seems to have dropped. we will proceed to the next question which will be from the line of madhur rati from counter cyclical investments before we take your question if anybody would like to ask a question you may press star and 1 madhur rati you may proceed with your question yeah i'm ho- i hope i'm audible right now it's slightly yes. better sir please go ahead yeah sir so, i just wanted to clarify you said five portion uh, footfall growth in our existing park and five portion from kochi for the fi building five and what will be the value growth for fi building five I'm not able to understand. Not clear. Could you please repeat? Uh, yes, sir. So we guide that the five station footfall growth for some of the existing parks and five station expansion from the Bhubaneswar Park. So what will be the value growth in the five twenty five? No, if you could see the R two rate, it's about some thousand to fifty six for the uh, quarter, and if you see for the nine months, uh, summer summer goes to thousand five four hundred. So existing park, maybe within that you can just do calculation. And for the Bhubaneswar Park, we will be looking at about an ARPU of some about one thousand rupees or something like that. Okay, and then what is the average ARPU increase that we should uh, be increasing every year? ARPU increase will be roughly this time it is about some fifteen percentage for the nine months under. So when we do the lot of uh, mix in our non-ticket revenue, when introduction of new products in our uh, FNB as well as in the retail segment, this can improve a lot. And then we are trying to improve the non-ticket revenue almost uh, maybe up to 40 percentage of my total ARPU level. Personally, it is about some 25 to 30 percentage, which eventually will improve my total ARPU. So, 15 percent is decent enough for the time being. Okay. Answer comes one last question. So, what is the ticket price in India that you are doing every year? Ticket price will be some 10 to 15 percent may increase on a year-to-year basis depends on the our uh, final decision on the the cost of inflation and other things. 
Oh, the song is very nice. Yeah, this between five and eight, uh, five and ten percent every year or two improvement you can expect. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Vinay Nadkarni from Hathaway Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Upon getting that resort uh, uh, in in your uh, Bangalore plot, uh, what is the what is the kind of revenue growth you you can anticipate in Bangalore, and would that would that also get captured in the ARPU or will it be captured separately? Yeah, so the resort will come as uh, other end. I mean, some some of it will come as the yeah, income will be captured separately. Uh, we hope to double the revenues from our resort. Uh, Once the new, uh, at least double or even more than that, uh, we'll give you more uh, more details as the investment is, uh, you know, right now the investment is only being planned; it's not yet completed. Uh, the projections for revenue will be given uh, once the uh, investment, uh, you know, the plan is complete. Yeah, but that would be a separate from even more than that. Yeah, th- that metrics would be different, right? Football, our pool yeah. will not apply there. There would be something else that would apply. Maybe yeah, it's called ARR, an annual and an average room rental, yeah. which will have yeah. an impact. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be different. Also. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. uh thank you everyone for joining this uh, uh con call for discussing the q q3 fy24 earnings uh we hope to continue on this uh, momentum that we have created in the last two years and we are uh, excited to um, you know showcase our expansion plans and uh, revenue uh, potential of this sector uh, we remain confident and bullish uh, of investing further into this uh, segment and hope to see you at the next call uh, soon thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Monarch Net Worth Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.